Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where I have got a new and a very interesting tutorial for you on LWC, the Lightning Web Components. In today's tutorial, we are going to build a simple calculator using Lightning Web Components in Salesforce. It's a great way to understand and learn about the power and simplicity of LWC. Well, before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming tutorials. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's get started. So this is the calculator that we are going to build. This is how the calculator is going to look once we build the calculator. Let's quickly check if the calculator is working properly. So let me do a quick sum. I do 70 plus 30 and then I click on the equal sign and it gives me the result as 100. So yeah, it's working pretty much like a calculator. Let me also uh, check if the clear functionality is working fine. So if I click on the C button, it should clear this. Let's click on C. Yeah, it's working fine. Um, and it's very simple, pretty straightforward uh, component to create and uh, create using Lightning Web Component. We'll be using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for building this. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go to VS Code and we'll create the Lightning Web Component here in VS Code. We cannot create Lightning Web Components directly from the Salesforce user interface, and that's the reason why you would need VS Code uh, for creating Lightning Web Component. Along with VS Code, you also uh, will need to have your uh, Salesforce CLI installed in your system. So in case you're not aware of you know, how a Lightning Web Component is created, I have created another tutorial, another video tutorial uh, for that, and you can refer to that. I'll try and put the link in the description for that tutorial. All right, so uh, once you're on the VS Code, all that you have to do is you just need to uh, uh, press Control Shift P. This will open up the list of all the commands and you just have to you know, select Create Lightning Web Component. And uh, once you select that command, uh, you will have to enter the name of your component, whatever you want to name the component. And uh, just enter the name. I want to name the component as Calculator. Press Enter. Once we've created the Lightning Web Component, uh, the component gets created and uh, we can see the component here. Uh, in the component, inside the component, there are a few files which get created. The first one is the HTML file, calculator.html file has got created. There's a JavaScript file and then there is a config file, the .xml file. Uh, in this, under this, you can also see a CSS file. I have created this CSS file separately. I'll show you how to create that. But by default, uh, the command that we use for creating the Lightning Web Component is going to create the HTML, JavaScript, and the .xml config file. All right. So I will start with writing the JavaScript part first. So let's let's get started. So this is my JavaScript file. So you will just you know open the JavaScript file and you're going to you know write the JavaScript code. Uh, the first statement here is basically the import statement that we're going to write. Uh, this import statement is uh, used uh, to import the necessary modules from the Lightning Web Component framework. So lightning element uh, is the basic class for lightning web components and that add track that we see this is a decorator used for tracking changes to a property now the next one the next statement is the export default class uh, calculator extends so this statement this basically defines the calculator class which extends the lightning element the you know the lightning element class which has been imported this statement extends the functionality of that add track decorator is used to make the uh result property reactive meaning changes to it will automatically trigger re-rendering of the component this property holds the current result of the calculator the attract decorator makes it reactive next uh next we will have a few methods here the first method is the, the handle click method this method is called when a button is clicked in the calculator and uh, it appends the value of the click button to the result property so that's what this is going to do that's what it's going to do. The next method is the calculate result method. The calculate result method. This method is called when the equal to button is clicked. It uses the eval function to evaluate the mathematical expression in the result property and update the result accordingly. All right. So that's what it's going to do. Now, along with this, what we are also going to do inside this, we are also going to have a try catch block. Uh, now the purpose of this try catch block is uh, so that it can be used to handle the potential errors such as division by zero or something like that. So, you know, this try catch error uh, will handle any exceptions or any errors basically. Uh, now, the next is the clear input method. Clear input method will be used on the C button that we saw for clearing any of the inputs. This method is also. Uh, 
this method is called when the c button is clicked it clears the current input by resetting the result property to an empty string we will now create the css file as i said earlier the css file is not created by default so what i have done is i have basically gone to the folder and created a, a css file so all that you have to do is you just have to go to the folder where this lightning web component is created and uh, you can create a dot css file with the same name like in this case uh, the name that is used for html javascript the same name you will use and you will just create a dot css file there it can be a notepad that you open empty notepad and you uh, just name that calculator.css and save it there all right now inside this notepad now what you have to do you will have to write your styling classes uh, all right so uh, first class that i have here is the dot calculator class this is going to be for used for the calculator this is the dot result this is the class which will define uh, the styling for the input box that we have uh, then we have got the dot buttons uh, class. I'm going to use this dot buttons class for the division where all the buttons will be included, all the numbers, mathematic operation buttons, and all those. So for that, we will have a division, and this class is going to be used for that. Uh, then dot button class, this we have here. And uh, the next is the dot equal class. This is what I'm going to use in the equals button. Uh, then we have got the dot clear class, uh, which is going to be used for the clear button. So these are all the classes that have been defined. Next, we go to the calculator.html file. We have already written the methods in uh, the JavaScript file. Now, what we are going to do, we are just going to you know define the components that we will have uh, in the HTML file, and we are going to call the methods. So actually, if you look at you know this calculator, what we have in the calculator, we just have an input field, one single input field, and we have got all buttons, all buttons for all the numbers that we have, and then we have got buttons for all the uh, operations like plus minus multiplication and division and then we have got an equals button and then we have got a clear button so that's what we have we are just going to you know call, uh, define those uh, tags here and we are going to call the or connect each of those components basically to the right method that's that's all we have to do here in the html file okay so let's get started so we start with defining our division here we define the input component here next we define another class and that now we are going to you know call or create all the buttons one by one the first button for seven eight nine and on all the buttons what we are doing we are basically calling this on click handle click so this is the method that we defined in javascript we are calling that um yeah so we are going to just put all the buttons in place so now we have got seven, eight, nine divide division symbol basically four, five, six, and then the multiplication symbol one, two, three, and then we have got the subtraction symbol, and then we have got zero, and then we have got a dot here, and we have got the equals to symbol and the plus symbol. So all the buttons are defined. Uh, yes, and one final is the clear button. Finally, you go to the config file, the uh, .xml file. You just have to go there. Uh, you don't have to write this uh, code from the scratch. You will have, you know, this much of code written. But you will need to, you know, make a few changes here to ensure that one, your Lightning Web component is visible in Salesforce, and uh, on which type of pages it's visible. So all that you have to do is first thing, uh, you will have to this is exposed uh, is by default set as false. You'll we'll have to change it to true and then you will have to define the target the target uh, is basically defining on which type of pages you want this lightning web component to be available so you can um, choose all these three types so you know there are three different types of lightning uh, pages that can be created app page record page home page uh, i am allowing this to be available for all types of pages that's it uh, in case you just want it to be available for app pages you can simply just choose this one and you don't have to select or you, you don't have to define these two in case you just want this to be available for app page but just for your understanding i have defined all these three so once this is done uh, again you know uh, save these changes now once the entire 
thing is ready all that you have to do is now we have got our javascript in place we have got the css in place we have got the html in place and we have got the config file css is optional as as you you are aware that you know the dot css file does not get created by default which means that that's optional in case you want to control the styling from your end you may want uh, css to be included there but in case you feel that you don't want any additional css in your uh, lightning web component you can simply skip that okay uh, uh now anyhow we have got everything in place what we have to do is we just have to go and now push the code from here to the salesforce org and before you can do that you just have to ensure that you have authorized your org the salesforce org from here so all that you have to do is go to control shift p click on authorize an org uh, i already have the org authorized so i'm not going to do that again but you know once you uh, click on this command what happens is uh, uh, the Salesforce login page opens up. You just have to, you know, uh, enter your username and password, and that sets the connect between the Visual Force, uh, sorry, VS Code, and uh, your Salesforce org. So once your org is authorized, all that you have to do is you just have to, you know, click on this and right-click on this uh, Lightning Web component, and you have to go to SFDX deploy source to org. So once you click on this, what will happen? It's going to deploy the code from VS Code to your org right so once you have done this this component is going to become available in your salesforce org now that your lightning web component is deployed the code or the lightning web component is completely deployed to your salesforce org uh, you just have to understand how do you bring it on a certain page and how do you see that um, so for that what you can do is you can simply go to you can just go and you know uh, call it on any page since we have in the config we have defined that this lightning web component is going to be available for record page home page and app page um, but what you can do is you can simply go to setup and uh, go to your app builder lightning app builder and in the lightning app builder you can build any type of page just click on new page so there are these are the three types of pages which are available i will just create uh, a new page i will Call it calculator underscore test. Just give it a name. Uh, you can choose a layout from here, whichever you want, um, and click on done. That is it. Yeah, so th this is structured based on the layout that you have chosen. In the left hand side, you have got a complete list of all the components, all the standard as well as the custom components. Mine is a custom component, this is a calculator component. You will just go and drag it here, and this is your calculator. So, so you just click on save. And there you go. We have successfully built a simple calculator using Lightning Web Components. There is so much more you can do with LWC. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment below. If you have any questions, I would be happy to help or answer your questions as and when I get a, get some time. Um, yeah, and definitely do subscribe for more Salesforce and LWC tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy coding.